Hello, hello, and welcome back to Seaopolis. Last episode, we continued this monstrosity, and we got ourselves some automatic lead processing, along with automatic charcoal for all of our furnace fuels. Granted, it's not super fast, but it does do it automatically, so technically, it works. Today, though, we're going to be jumping into some thermal engineering to unlock some electric machines, which is going to make our life a whole lot easier in the future. This pack was also updated to now include item pipes, which is going to be very useful uh, so we don't have to use Tom's simple storage everywhere. So to start us off, we're going to need the flux duct, which thankfully we have a whole lot of lead now thanks to our automatic processing. And we'll also need to craft a piston. Put that aside for the minute. Then we can grab our flux duct. This is the pipe that's going to move our power around. And with those, we can craft the machine frame. This is sort of the base for all of the machines from Thermal Expansion. Then with this and our piston, looks like we need a whole bunch of other blocks here. We're going to craft the pulverizer some fluid ducts which allow us to transport fluids around then we'll also need the sterling boiler and a steam dynamo and this should be all of the setup we need to get this going i'm gonna put this down at the end here so that i can access our storage to generate steam to turn it into power we are going to need a source of infinite water which is going to come from the aqueous accumulator so let's get this guy down He's going to have to be next to two sources of water, like here and here. And then it's going to show us that it's generating water out the top. So from here, we can take our fluid ducts and connect our sterling boilers up to this. To actually work with our pipes, we need the crescent hammer. And then we can come over here and configure these guys somehow so that it gets water into them. Do I need to rotate this? Ah, I totally forgot that fluid ducts from thermal dynamics require servos in order to work. Which is probably why it tells you to craft them in the quest book. Okay, so if we attach a servo to this aqueous accumulator, it's going to set it to extract. And then we can get this into our sterling boiler. Uh, uh, pipe so we have two of these guys and then if i attach another pipe if we put some charcoal in here it's going to start generating some steam and then if i attach another pipe to this and a servo it's going to extract the steam which is going to go into our steam dynamo and this is actually going to output our power cool so let's just attach our other and we have power now this can go into our pulverizer using the flux duct, which I believe has to be attached to the top here. Then we can attach this and we should start getting some power in here. Eventually, we can set up our pulverizer to replace our straining machines over here at like the cobblestone generator. So we can pulverize cobblestone into gravel and gravel into sand, sand into dust, all that business. But for now, let's just keep progressing through what we can. Looks like we'll need copper dust, iron dust, and nickel dust. We're going to use these to make some alloys. So I'll just go ahead and probably make a good amount of these. So let's get crushing here with all of our ingots. We are eventually going to need some more machine frames for these up to machines here. The multi-servo press and the induction smelter. We're going to be crafting these soon. So let's go ahead and get that set up while all of our ores or our ingots are so let me go ahead and get those while all of our ingots are crushing down there we go all of our dusts are now pulverized so we're gonna make both the constantin blend and the invar blend we then just need to smelt these up to get them into ingot form this way we get invar and constantin ingots we need a full block of constantin to make the multi servo press oh it looks like we need two blocks it's a liar now we can make the multi-servo press. In here, we're going to take some of our invar and turn it into plates. Easy peasy. And then we'll use those plates to make the gear working die, which then goes back into the multi-servo press. And with four invar ingots, it will make an invar gear. Last step for this chapter is to take those gears and make the induction smelter. Ta-da! This machine is going to allow us to alloy items together instead of having to craft them manually. 
And we're going to use this right away to make signalum, or however you want to say that. This is going to take some redstone, copper, and tin. So let's get some of this crafting. Let's pop all of these in here. That's not the right thing. To start crafting some signalum, just like that. We're then going to use the signalum to craft the magma crucible and the fluid encapsulator. The magma crucible is a machine that takes some items and turns them into liquids. So for example, we'll be able to get lava like this by melting cobblestone. The real reason we need it is for destabilized redstone though, which is then going to go into the fluid encapsulator to make redstone flux coilers, which we use to make more machines. So here is the magma crucible. Boink, boink, da -da. We can go ahead and use this to melt down some cobblestone and turn that into lava. And let's grab a bucket of that. Now that we're done making lava though, we're going to make a couple bits of destabilized redstone by melting this down, which is then going to go into a fluid encapsulator. And we can set our configuration on this magma crucible to output to the next side over. We set this to auto output and we set this one to input. This should pull that destabilized redstone into it. Now with a blank coil, we're going to pop this into here. This does need power. Yoink. And this is going to get us the redstone flux coil. This bad boy is going to unlock some new machines that we can craft along with some new power generation. For example, we could use that lava and use a magmatic dynamo somewhere to generate power if we wanted to. I think that's a future project though. But for now though, we're free to keep moving on. We're going to craft the crystallizer using our new redstone flux coil and those signal and plates. Now this is going to need some water input into it. So let's get our fluid ducts over to that so that he gets water input. There we go. We then need to find some of our niter dust, which we are sieving from somewhere. Oh, that's from the dust sieving, that's right. But we're going to take all of this, pop it into the crystallizer, and super, super slowly, apparently, this is going to turn into niter. With at least six pieces of niter, we're going to make purifying salt mulch, which will be used on a piece of mulch to make purifying water. You can go in there. Purifying water. There we go. Now, we need to take this Put it into a strainer with some niter to get amethyst dust. So back to straining time. So let's get a mesh and some niter into here. And right now we do only have a 10% chance of getting this from our niter due to only having a tier 3 mesh. But there we go. We got some. And then once it's available, we're going to take this and put it back into the crystallizer to get amethyst shards. So, we kind of just need to, excuse me, kind of just need to repeat this process for a bit until we at least have five amethyst shards to unlock the amethyst mesh, which is the next tier up above the bronze one. And then we're going to take this and swap it out with the dust straining to unlock a whole bunch of new materials to work with, new ores and some new gems. Uh, we'll unlock Certus Quartz Dust, which we're going to use eventually to unlock Refined Storage, which is going to be our new storage system, and we're going to use it to automate everything uh, that we can. Uh, we're going to replace our strainers with pulverizers and everything, and it's all going to be a good time. So let me see if I can finish this out and unlock the Amethyst Strainer real quick, so we can at least get some of those materials to start collecting for next time and then we'll come back in the next episode and work with all those new materials oh we can make mesh upgrades hold on a minute let me make one of these improved everything upgrade this will make our strainers faster it'll increase the output chance it'll reduce the chance that our input gets consumed and it will reduce the damage that our mesh takes well, that is just nifty, isn't it? The improved everything upgrade just takes a mesh upgrade, a duration upgrade, an improved output upgrade, and an improved input upgrade, which all combine to make the everything upgrade, which we can pop into our strainer 
even though we already have all the amethysts we need, this should increase our productivity in the strainer for the next time we need them. We can make our amethyst strainer now, our amethyst mesh, and pop this where our dust is getting strained. Ta-da! And we'll probably want to steal the improved everything upgrade. Pop it in here so that this gets processed faster. And we'll get more stuff out of it. We're going to start getting some new materials like whiz powder, silver ore, gold ore, appetite dust, certus dust, and silicon. So we'll need drawers for all of these too. So I am going to work on setting that up so that we can have all of our, all of these items getting input and stored up for next episode. But until then, I hope you enjoyed today's episode and I will see you next time. Goodbye.